Hello, everybody, and welcome to our October 2020 edition of the Building Engineering Community Virtual Meetup. Um, we will uh, wait for another minute or two uh, to have more uh, folks joining us. In the meantime, um, if you'd like, uh, go into the chat window and tell us where you're dialing from uh, today. All right, I see we have uh, people from Toronto. Hi, Praveen, I'm from Montreal myself. Uh, we have people from the Philippines, from El Paso, Texas, from Alberta, Canada, somebody from Montreal, uh, Cornwall, Ontario, Laval, Quebec here, uh, Boston, New York City, uh, Denver, Colorado, Spain, uh, the Dominican Republic. Wow, we have people from all over the world. This is, uh, this is really good. Uh, even from uh, from Alaska, we have somebody from the United Kingdom, from uh, Disneyland. <laughs> it's really nice. Uh, from the Cebu Institute of Technology. Uh, I think that's in the Philippines. It's again, from uh, Kansas and Kentucky. Awesome. It's really good to see everybody here. Um, just a few more seconds. I see the numbers are starting to settle. Uh, and yes, in case you are wondering, our main presenter today, Carlos, is uh, on a ultra wide monitor. So the content <laughs> is, uh, and, and this is the, the resolution that his monitor has. So that's why the content looks like this. That's going to come in handy when he actually shows Revit as the, the model will, uh, he will be able to fit more of the model uh, on the screen. Uh, Somebody is joining in from Mars. Good to see you, Eric. I'm happy we finally made it there. <laughs> Uh, Amarillo, Texas, Virginia Beach, Maine. Awesome, so good to see so many people joining us. Um, all right, just a few more seconds and then we, uh, we will get started. All right, I, uh, I see the numbers are, are settling really well. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, this is the October 2020 edition of our monthly Building Engineering Community Virtual Meetup. Um, my name is Robert Adam. I am a Program Manager in the Autodesk Customer Success Team. And uh, here with me, uh, we have the main presenter for today, uh, Carlos Sorona, who is a uh, Principal Implementation Consultant with Autodesk. And uh, Carlos, welcome to the webcast. Thank you for uh, presenting and I'll let you introduce yourself. Uh, thank you, Robert. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, joining the call today. Uh, my name is Carlos Ferrona and I am a Principal Consultant with Autodesk uh, and I support uh, everything under the BIM umbrella and happy to show you some tools today. Excellent. Thank you so much for that, Carlos. Before we begin, just a little bit of house cleaning here. Um, I see you guys are already familiar with the questions window, which is really great. That's what we're going to use to collect questions from you as um, the lines are muted. We have over 200 people uh, attending today, so we have to keep the lines muting to reduce background noise. Uh, so while Carlos is presenting, please feel free to type your questions in the uh, Q&A uh, or in the questions panel. Uh, I will be collecting all of those questions and at the end of the presentation we will have um, quite a few minutes of, of Q&A where Carlos will be able to answer uh, everything that you guys have put in the, uh, or as many as, uh, of the questions as he, uh, as he can that you have put in the questions panel. Uh, this session is being recorded uh, as are all of our monthly webinars and we will post the recording. Um, to the page you see there on the Customer Success Hub. There's a section for upcoming meetups and there's a past section where you can see the playlists of um, all of our recordings so far. Uh, also, all of you who have registered for this session will receive an automated email tomorrow, around this time tomorrow, with a link to the recording as well. 
one more thing before we begin uh, the mandatory safe harbor statement um anything um you know anything that's being discussed in carlos will mostly will talk about existing um features in in our products uh so any any information that you see here applies to that there is we we make no promises about any future development any um roadmap or anything like that that might come in into the product later um and that being said carlos i will hand it over to you uh to present and i will be here to um take questions great thank you robert so for the topic of today we're going to be looking into adding cable tray in revit as far as our objectives uh, model cable tray vertically and horizontally along a wall and modifying cable tray fittings in type spaces uh, keep in mind that some of the workflows that we're going to be looking at today are some might be a workaround and some might be native within the environment itself Okay, so let's go ahead and move over to Revit. Okay. Okay. And here I have a floor plan. And this floor plan is also designating a electrical room. So jumping into cable tray, I'm going to lay out a cable tray horizontally and also showing how to drop the cable tray on this corner of the wall. You will notice that I do have my settings in Revit set to a, a finer detail, just so that you can see the nuances of the cable tray itself, rather than just seeing a gray uh, solid um, rectangle. So just to make your life easier, you can always change your view detail if it's just a floor plan that you're going to be using. Uh, but if it's not going to be necessarily a view that you're going to be placing on a sheet, then I'll be very mindful of how many fine level of details you have in your project. OK, uh, I'm going to the ribbon now, and I'm going to select table tray uh, from the ribbon panel under systems. Uh, I'm not going to save the project just yet. Uh, notice that in my type selector, I have cable tray with fittings, and this is a ladder cable tray. You will notice that the options bar will highlight showing you the width, uh, the middle elevation, which is going to be your Z-axis elevation, uh, the apply button, and then we have uh, the tag, uh, if you want a, uh, a leader, if you're going to be tagging the cable tray. And then we have the bend radius. I'm going to select an area here. Uh, I'm going to leave it as a, a, a 12 by 2, or just for sake of showing everyone here, which I'm sure most of you might know. If I select an 8 by 2, and I start it here by selecting or doing a uh, left click, I can click in another area just to stop that first segment, and then I can change the uh, size in the options bar. And the moment I do that, you will see that I get a, um, a, a reducer um, fitting connected to it. Okay. Now to drop down within the wall, if, I, if I'm here, one of the nuances of Revit is try not to be too tight when you're dropping down. I tend to be a little bit more exaggerated when you're dropping down um, on the on the vertical side. You can always use your align tool to bring uh, those objects back. Uh, Revit relies a lot on uh, the length length of objects, depending on how you're connecting them, and you could be getting these uh, yellow dialog boxes uh, showing you that there is not enough room, or you get a circle with a slash through it that it, it can't find a next fitting because it's it's too tight there's not enough room and it doesn't know that it can place that fitting uh, so i tend to be a little bit more exaggerated here so i'm going to click there and to drop down on the vertical i will rely on my options bar and in this case the middle elevation i'm going to change that to two inches 
Now, keep in mind, I'm not going to keep I'm not going to keep drawing here because then it's going to drop down on the vertical and then put an elbow and then keep going uh, on the horizontal. Uh, so I don't want that uh, because it, it, it's a continuation that you might not want. Uh, so then if you want to just finish it here, then in the options bar, you would select apply. So I'm going to select that there. And now you can see, if I zoom in, here is the drop. Uh, if I go to a shade uh, detail, you can see that a little bit better. That we have here, this is the elbow, and now it's dropping down. Okay. Now, if I need to bring this back to the wall, it's just a matter of using the Align tool. So I will go to either the Modify uh, tab in the ribbon, and under the Modify panel, there is this tool here called Align, or you can type a L on your keyboard, and now we can go ahead and align that. So I'm going to select the wall okay, here, and then I'm going to select the drop of that cable train. Okay, and that's what you should see. Now I'm going to move into the section now that we have our vertical. And in the section, I'm going to do some modifications to uh, connect to that vertical uh, along the wall itself. And how do you place fittings? So I'm going to go to a section view. So this is our uh, vertical along the wall. Now, this is where we get into uh, a little bit of complexity when uh, tying into something that's vertical this way. The reason why is that if I were to select this cable tray and, I will, and I'm going to right click and create similar and I will try to tee, tee off of here uh, and go to this route and you will notice I get this window telling me that the solution is in the opposite direction and this is definitely not what you want to see. Even if I go to the Modify tool and select the object and rotate, you will notice that it's not rotating on the lateral side or the or the flat side of that cable tray. So this is definitely not what we want. Okay. So what would be the easiest way of remedying this scenario is since this is already on the vertical wall side, it's just a matter of selecting this object and selecting copy. And I'm going to go ahead and copy it, move it over. And then in here, I can either rotate it or hit my space bar. Um, in, in some instances, it will, it will flip on the 90. Or I can just rotate this and rotate on the 90. I'm going to press and drag and move this cable tray like so. Now, if I were to go back to a floor plan view, you will notice that I do see, just like we aligned that drop on the vertical to the wall, since it's still on the same plane, it this is now on the wall as well, right above uh, these panels. Now here's where we get into some uh, other nuances when it comes to the fittings. Now, if I were to right click here and create similar and start moving around here and doing something like this, you can see that this defaults back uh, to the, the reverse lateral uh, of the flat uh, cable train. We do not want that. Again, this is this is not going to be the best case scenario for this. So just like we did before, it's just better to select the object that you've already dropped on the vertical and copy. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this, and I'm going to copy this over. Ultimately, I can always reduce the size, okay, like so. So what are we missing? Well, we're missing an elbow, and if I want to T, uh, I need to give myself a little bit more room here just to to tee off here. I need to put in those fittings. So I will select the systems tab in the ribbon. 
And in the Systems tab, I am going to select Cable Tray Fitting. Okay. Now in here, I will start with the elbow. And in this case, I'm going to select the ladder uh, horizontal bend standard. And I will bring this into the section view here. Now, keep in mind that when you select it, it still does not know what, what reference to place it. So it could actually be just floating in space in this particular room. So just be very mindful of that, that that will need to be fixed. So I would need to, if we go to the electrical room, you can notice that there is that elbow. Okay, probably not what you want to see. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm going to select the object and you're going to notice these circles. These circles are flip controls of this particular family. Uh, there's really no uh, way of knowing how this is gonna flip. It's just a matter of cycling through them and making sure that when it flips, it's appropriate to what you're trying to accomplish. So I'm going to select this one. Nope, that's not it. Let's do this other one. Okay, much better. Uh, now let's flip it on the other side. I do wanna see the actual cable tray like this. There we go, you see? So the, the way that I had it before, it was on the bottom. I flipped it back again, and now I see the actual ladder uh, rails here, and now I know that I'm on the top. Uh, so now this is just a matter of um, flipping it to the right size, or like so, and I did use the space bar to do that, or you can use your rotate command. Now I need to make sure that the size is correct. Uh, this is a six, uh, six by four, but we know that we have a 12 by two. Now I can either change the size in the options bar or I can change the size here. I can just type in 12 okay, and then change this to a two, okay, like so. Now keep in mind, uh, like I mentioned before, this might not be right on the wall. So we might need to align that. So I'm gonna go back to a floor plan view and you can see that there is that elbow. So I'm going to go ahead and use my align tool or AL, and I'm gonna align that elbow to the wall. Now go back to section. You'll notice that we don't see any difference other than, other than we moved it back onto the wall to make sure that we're aligned to these uh, two uh, cable trays here on the horizontal and the vertical. All right, so now what I can do is that I can press and drag and I can use that construction line like so to bring this element uh, to the vertical one. And I can do the same thing with this element here as well. Uh, I can bring it over, making sure that I have uh, a good orientation, or I can still use my align tool as well, AL, and then I can align here. Uh, let me see if I can tab through this one, or I can probably do this one. Let me see, I'm gonna undo that. Let's try this line here. That's gonna probably be better. And there we are. Now to move this over, I'm just going to use my nudge tool or the arrow keys to nudge this over. Okay. So there is my elbow. Now this is where it gets a little tricky just because of the way Revit works. If I were to drag this out and I want to connect into here and say, well, I want to connect because I want to get an automatic T, this is what happens. Okay. So just be very mindful. Why did that happen? Well, if you notice the moment that you are moving this out, the elbow highlights. The reason that's happening is because there's a relationship between the two. So you have to be mindful that you don't wanna necessarily uh, rely on that relationship because you are going to get some strange things happening like you see here. So what we wanna do is just increase the size based on uh, the size uh, dimension itself. So in this case, if I go to 15, uh, I know that's a bit big, but just so I can gauge what what I need here as far as the size. Uh, so I can probably knock that down to maybe maybe a 10. Yeah, that's much better. Okay. So then I'm going to move this over just a little tiny bit. Okay. And now I'm ready to put in my T. We're going to modify a few things for the T to work. Uh, but just like we did before with the elbow. Now, in this case, I will go back to my systems tab in the ribbon, 
and I will select uh, cable tray fitting. And in the type selector, I will select here the ladder uh, for the horizontal T. So there's this one. And I'm going to bring in this object. Like you noticed before, it might not be on the right orientation. So we can just go ahead and cycle through uh, these uh, rotational objects here. And I click the very first one. And there we go. That's exactly what we want to see. Uh, what we need to modify now is these uh, sizes. So in this case, this is going to be a 12 by 2. And make sure that this is also a 12 by 2. You'll notice that in this particular case, uh, the automatic uh, changing of these two areas here, this 12 by 2 here and here, change when they both change when I changed one. But the T coming out did not. Uh, that's because you can have different sizes when it comes to this type of T. Uh, so just be mindful that you might need to change this one as well, okay? So now I have a T that's completely a 12 by two. I'm using my space bar to make sure that it's aligned appropriately. And now I'm going to move it into uh, this uh, vertical cable tray. And it's okay if it's on top, we're gonna we're gonna change this here in a little bit, uh, but that looks like it's a line. I got a construction line there, so that's perfect. That's what I want to see. Now that I'm here, this might not be the best case scenario because I have two objects on top of each other. So here I'm going to have to uh, cut this portion out. Now I can't pull this down and drag it down because it will give me an error, just like we saw before. If you notice, if I did that here. Okay, well, in this case, it did work. Okay. So we have that option. Uh, keep in mind that I, I, I had tried this already a few times and we get some strange things happening. Um, those are just the nuances of Revit. Uh, but if this did uh, connect, then if we connect here, we might get an error. So you see, even though I pulled it down and it didn't give me an error, there's some instances where it does, but in this case, I try to reconnect back and it tells me that there's no auto route solution found. Okay, a few things that are happening here in the background. Well, this is not aligned appropriately because this is probably floating as well. So that needs to be brought back. Is there a easier way of doing this? There could be a, a couple of ways, but to show as far as the exercise here, what would be quicker is to just split this and trim it out. Uh, and, and if you don't get any errors, um, uh, pulling this back, then that would work as well. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the Modify uh, tab in the ribbon. Uh, so it's going to Modify. And I'm going to use the Split Element. And I'm going to split this element right there. And I can go ahead and delete this piece. And keep in mind when you do that, there's going to be another little piece that's going to uh, appear. And you probably don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that as well. Now let's go ahead and verify that this object is aligned to the wall as we did with the other objects. So I'm going to go back to my electrical room and I'm going to move into this area. And you notice that again, this object is floating uh, out in the room. So we don't want that. So I will use the align tool, align to that wall, and then align the object like so. Uh, and you'll notice that these padlocks pop up and you don't necessarily need to lock any of these objects uh, to the wall. Okay, now that we have our object here, uh, this is uh, a elbow dropping down, so we can actually leave that there. Or what we can do is that we can select uh, these objects this way and we can move that up uh, just to add some more, some more accuracy. The same thing will go with uh, this object. Uh, and the same thing will go with this one as well. So we can just go ahead and move that up. You'll notice that, that I am not connecting. The reason is that you might get some behavior that you don't want. Uh, this is just a workaround to make sure that you're able to lay a cable tray on a wall uh, laterally instead of uh, coming out from the wall. Now in here, I think I might just have a few more feet. So I'll probably change this to 12. 
Okay, and then now I can move this over like so. Um, it could be probably even 11.6. It just really depends how you want to uh, be laying this out. Uh, so something to this effect, or maybe even 11.9. There we go. Let me just move this back a little bit more. Uh, and there we go. So, so what did we see here? We saw adding a vertical cable tray. Uh, adding a cable tray and fittings, we added it along a wall with a drop, aligned it to the wall, okay? and if we need to modify any of these uh, objects, always be mindful that if I select it and we have uh, any dimensions that we need to change, we can change it here. Uh, I can also uh, trim inside this piece and put a reducer, or maybe we're reducing from one size and going back to another. Uh, all that's possible with your trim and your modify functions within that particular object. Now let's go ahead and look at what would be the best way of changing the cable tray if you're in a tight space. In this case, uh, you notice that I have some ductwork here. So I'm going to go back to my floor plan view. And in this uh, floor plan, let me see, this is section one. Uh, let me actually go back to my floor plan. So here it is. Okay. And let me go to a hidden view. Uh, so I'm going to tee off of this object. Now I'm going to select this cable tray. And I'm going to select create similar. And I will pick this piece here. Notice that automatically I get that T. Okay. And I can move this over again using your nudge tool. Uh, if there's anything that I can see that will help is using your arrow keys uh, to move things around in small increments just to get the layout that you need. Now I'm going to go back to a section view and you notice that, well, we could actually be crashing into that ductwork. So a few things can happen here when it comes to this particular layout. Now I could delete this and modify it from this, from this T. Or I can use the split command and split it in various points to get the proper elbows or the proper 45s to go up and, up and around. So let's look at those two different scenarios. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete, and I'm gonna select the T. I'm gonna right click. I'm going to uh, draw cable tray. And notice in here, um, again, as I mentioned before, I don't tend to get too tight because I know that it might give me an error if there's not enough room to put in that particular fitting. So I'm going to be a bit exaggerated with my, uh, my routing here. Uh, so let me go ahead and pick that point. Let me just go back and do that, uh, draw cable train. And let me see if I can bring this out to, Hopefully I didn't draw anything in here. Let's see, yep, that's it. So I'm going to draw just a bit of a takeoff. Coming out from the team might not be the best scenario, but just a little bit of a takeoff. And then in here, now I can move that back. Uh, probably about six inches. And now draw cable tray. And you know, so here it says no auto route solution found. Again, that's telling you that there's just not enough room. That's okay. I can move this over and I can draw cable tray. And again, I can be a bit exaggerated with my movements here, like so. Now, if you look at the size of this particular elbow, that might not be the best for this uh, solution. So if you need to change it, you can either change it here or you can go to your options bar. And I'm gonna change this to six inches, like so. Now I can go ahead and press and drag and move that piece back, like so. And the same thing goes with this piece. I can go ahead and move this back. Now I can go ahead and draw cable tray and do the same thing here. If I need to go to this piece and maybe drop this down on a 45, like so, and bring it over, okay? So now I can just go ahead and select these elbows 
I'm using my control key to select them all. And now I can go ahead and change all of these to six inches, like so. Okay. Uh, keep in mind, if we did the same thing, we can actually select this one, and this will change according uh, to how it's connected. So if I need to bring this down a little bit, you'll notice that on the right-hand side, the takeoff between elbows is getting shorter and shorter. That might not be the best scenario for, for this, because the moment I get past it, okay, I get this error. Okay? And you definitely do not want that, because that means that now you have elbows coming into elbows that are not necessarily connected, connected logically. Okay? So I'm going to cancel that. But if I get close, like so, then I don't get any errors. So on the uh, tight spaces like this, you just want to make sure that you're measuring your distances, you're avoiding your objects, make sure that your bends make sense, and you'll come up with the right solution. OK, so now that we looked into uh, modifying uh, the cable tray fittings and tight spaces, uh, we added all our verticals, our corners are down uh, on the vertical, and we modified. Um, this this concludes the exercises, so now I want to open it up to everybody here on the call if you have any questions uh, with what we just demonstrated. Yeah, we have uh, quite a few questions, Carlos, and uh, before I start reading them, I encourage all of you to keep posting questions into the uh, question panel. Um, and we'll, uh, I'll pass them to Carlos uh, as they become available. All right, so the first one is from Jan. Uh, mm -hmm. And you might have shown this, Carlos, but I just wanted to make sure you did. Um, if you show cable tray today, can you show how to run a length normally, then rotate, rotate it 90 degrees so that the normal bottom of the tray runs along the wall? Not up the wall, but along the wall. This is from Jan. Oh, on, 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 the, on the 90, okay. Uh, yes, so let me go ahead and... Um, probably let's do another area here. So let's go ahead and go to a floor plan. Um, let's do, uh, let's, let's see, let's go to a view, let's go to a section. Let's, let's do that here. Let's, let's flip that so we can see that piece there. Uh, so I believe the question was if we, um rub is this object here like so and this way and i believe that will actually show on the 90. and i believe if i go to a fine level of detail we would see that's our um, cable tray uh, and then here if we wanted to uh, draw a cable tray and drop on the 90, this would still drop and still be connected coming out to, um, from that wall. Now, if we were to see this, just to kind of get a better um, representation, if I were to go to a, um, a 3D view, so let me go to a 3D view. This is the one that we just created, by the way. So just to show um, how that looks on, on that wall. Okay. Uh, so let me go ahead and change this. Um, okay, and let me do another view here. Okay, and let's, I'm going to right click on the view cube, orient to view, section, section two. And this is the one that we just did. So if we did look at that piece. There's that piece running uh, here. Let me shade that so you can see that that piece there, like so. Okay. I hope I answered that that question. Thank you, Carlos. Ian, let us know uh, if you if you want more explanation. Just feel free to type one more question in the panel and we'll, we'll go back to Carlos. Uh, Daniel Jackson is asking uh, what Revit version. Uh, you are running for this demo yes this version is uh, 2020.2 okay awesome um then um 
from Joel. I think it's more of a uh, suggestion than a comment. If you mirror at a 45 degree with a sketch line, you can avoid the multiple step you make with a copy workflow. Uh, absolutely. There's many different ways of um, uh, skinning the cat, per se. So uh, thank you for that. And Brian is asking, what about the clearances that the electrical contractor would need to reserve for getting access to the tray? Yeah, so then you you could actually put in some uh, symbolic line in here. So uh, very good, very good observation. Uh, so an, an example here, uh, like um, you know the front end clearance for the panels, right? Um, so so in this in the, in that particular scenario, if that was important for you to put in here, then just uh, put, I would put in uh, either a family uh, that has a symbolic line in it showing you that uh, uh, that distance. Some of these actually already do have them. So if I were to select this uh, uh, that panel, if I were to edit that that family, um, some of them actually do have uh, front end clearance. So this one doesn't have it. Uh, but there is a way if I were to uh, go to this reference level. Uh, actually, let's go to, yeah, I guess this would be fine. Uh, go to elevation view. Oops, zoom into that. So in here, so this is the panel. So the, the, the best scenario here would be to actually use a line. Uh, let me just do annotate. Uh, I'll do a symbolic line. Uh, let's do a reference level, okay. Uh, floor plan. Okay, let's do floor plan. And it's just a matter of just bringing that that line work out and then loading it back in. Uh, there's a few other things that need to happen here, but that would be ultimately my my take on it. Or if you don't want to do it on, at the family level, uh, let me close that. Don't want to load it in yet. Then in here, use your uh, annotation and use a detail line uh, if you needed to bring line work in like so and uh, do something like that and then in here I'll tab that and change this to a um, probably something like um, like a hidden line like so and then you can you can put a note showing that you know you, you, there's a clearance here and it needs to be respected. Uh, I've seen it in in different scenarios, so I've used it with with uh, just line work, uh, but you don't want to have too much of it because lines make models heavy. Or you can do it from the family level uh, on the equipment. That way that you know where the where the uh, where, whether either your conduit or your cable tray needs to line up or needs to avoid uh, for maintenance or access. All right. <clears throat> Thank you so much for that, Carlos. All right, let's You're see welcome. the next. Uh, the next question um, we got was from Michael, and he says, "In regards to the vertical drop, how do you keep the open web of the cable tray from dropping backwards?" And he says, uh, "Clarifications: Installers will not install ca cable tray this way." Okay, so let's take a look at. So let's let's do the. Let's do the other three, not this three view. Let's do the other one. Okay, can we cancel that? Um, so the question was, how do you keep? Um, so in, in this in this particular case, you can see that it is on the on the right side because the the the, the ladder is on the wall. Uh, so, the, so can you repeat the question again? Uh, yes, he says, in, in regards to the vertical drop, how do you keep the open web of the cable tray from dropping backwards? From dropping backwards. Now, I'm... All right, let's see if Michael's still on the line. Maybe we can yeah. get him to... Yeah, to... Let's see. Yeah, yeah, let's get Michael on the, on, on the call. Uh, Michael, I will unmute you if you don't mind, and you can ask, you can talk to Carlos. You're unmuted now, Michael. Oh, I see, I see what you're saying, like in this scenario right here. Michael? 
Michael, are you still there? There I am. How about that? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Michael from Texas, how are you? Doing well, thank you. Doing well. Okay, so when you ran that cable dray and you, you hit the apply, mm -hmm. and it and it did the automatic drop. Mm -hmm. One thing I noticed immediately was that ladder was on would be on the outside or away from the wall, which makes it difficult to install ladder tray. Now I understand for architects and engineers this is a non-issue, but if we're detailers mm -hmm. and we're doing this for our crews out in the field that are installing it, one, mm -hmm. they won't install it that way. Mm -hmm. Two, it would confuse them and say, do you want it this way or can we just put it in like we're supposed to? Now the ladder you have running horizontally across the panels, mm -hmm. that one's correct. Yeah, I can I can see that this this didn't flip on the on the right side. Correct. So really, it's just, yeah. It, it, yeah. So this here is just a matter of, of of rotating it, but you would need to be in plan view for that. Uh, so right. The, yeah, yeah. But Revit uh, automatically made it drop backwards. That is, that is correct. Yes, They're, and these are just the nuances that you have to just keep in mind uh, as far as um how the layout works and and even if i mean there's some scenarios that even on a drop um if you want to go if, if you want to go flat this way but then you if i were to click a, uh, a connection here then it'll go it, it won't go flat it'll, it'll go straight across and these are just that's why you have your rotate mirror align Correct. You know, and, and that and those are going to be the, the the tools that you're definitely going to need. So in this case, you are correct. In in this one, um, I would need to I would need to flip it. So I would need to. And actually, in that in that instance, I would. I think the space bar would actually rotate it along its. There you go. Now it's correct. Yeah. So let's uh let's go back to that um let me go back to that 3D view. Um, so I, I, again, I just use the rotate tool. The space bar, if you notice here, it does not, it, it, it won't work. It's it, there's like, there's like a it lot. It would spin it on the plane of the wall. Of oh, the wall, that's correct. Yes. Yeah. yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, Michael, while you're still on the line, I see you had a couple of other questions about the reference plane and the working plane. Yes. After watching the the demonstration i wondered if it was possible to set the working plane to either a reference plane that you created so you could control where that tray went or set the working plane to the wall and then draw a cable tray that way you you could and that's just another another way of doing it uh, i just use the align tool just to keep it easy but that you are correct if right. I were if I were to um, uh, go to architecture here and do a reference plane, and I'm going to do a reference plane right here. Um, not worried about that. Let me see if I can turn that on. Annotation categories. Um, let me go to all. Okay, there we go. So here, um, and I I'll, I'll just normally the best practice is I was given a name, so I just call it. Correct. Um, um uh, uh elect uh room table okay. okay so and in that case then i can come into here move that over all the way and now i can go ahead and align these objects to that reference plane and in that scenario if i do that so i will do an al to that object and this object, and then in this case, I will lock it. You would lock it. Yes. But my, my question was, if you set the actual working plane to that, mm -hmm. the, the uh, new reference plane, you just, could you not draw cable tray and it not come in wrong? Well, let's give it a try. Let's do, uh, let's do cable tray. Um, you notice that one of the things here, uh, there is no setting, you notice in the ribbon, to assign a reference plane. Right, you have to go to system to actually pick it. Exactly here, there you go. And then set the plane to the reference plane. Mm -hmm. Right, so then I can set it here, 
-hmm. and then we can come into here and there is my uh electrical room cable tray okay yep and mm -hmm. then in here um yeah i guess we can do it in section one okay uh, now my my question would be at this point now that your working plane is there mm -hmm. and, you're, and it thinks you're in a plan view could you not draw a cable tray and it yeah. be all connected pieces it did but not. you see how you see how it still doesn't take into consideration the um your the 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 lateral the lateral movement right yeah so that's just inherent within the cable tray itself so even it, it is on the work plane right because we assigned it right uh, but it's still not going to route it safe on the on the lateral so then you still need to create that vertical piece understood okay very good i think that's all i had thank you so much uh, thank you so much michael yeah thank, thank you michael you. for the questions um, Carlos, uh, another question we got was, um, is this a custom family or is this a standard cable tray that comes from David? This this is a standard cable tray family out of the box, and I believe they've been there since probably 20, 2018, I would say. Awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Matt is asking, does the cable tray cut through walls and create opening you know, walls to utilize when creating a wall penetration drawing? Uh, unfortunately not. So one of the things that has been, uh, uh, that I've seen and that I've, I've done myself in the past is that if, if we do have a scenario where, um, and here, I'll just do, I'll just do this, uh, draw cable tray and we're gonna do this and let's, um, create similar like so. And we did um, two. Okay. And let's uh, orient this to where's my other call? Let's see if this is going to regenerate. And let's do that view there. Okay. So we have this scenario where you'll notice the cable tray, and we go to a fine level detail. Okay. And so you see that it's not automatic, right? Uh, if there's anything that I can see that that I've seen in the past, uh, there there is a way that you can create an, a family to uh, drop in and assign an opening. So then that way um, you, you can quantify your openings, but then you're during a clash detection, it doesn't get flagged as an interference. Uh, so I would say out of the box this way, no, but there is a, there is a way that you can do that with a parametric family, um, uh, either a parametric family with um, uh, dimensional parameters that that you can assign. It won't detect the geometry automatically, but at least you can assign the opening yourself. Uh, or um, with um, uh, uh, some automate some design automation with uh, with Dynamo. Uh, so that's that's how I've, I've I've seen them being used. Awesome. And then speaking of clash detection, another question coming from Matt is can you add clearances to the tray for use in class detection uh clearances within within this within the actual system family because that's what cable tray is unfortunately not because they're uh the actual cable tray it's it behaves like a pipe or or duct they're system families and, and you can't modify the nature of the system family now if you wanted to get into uh more of uh, of of that automation with it. There are there are possibilities um, with uh, with the, the API, but just keep in mind that this is getting into more custom uh, a more custom solution, uh, and it's just it, and it just really is a matter of testing. So out of the box, could you modify um, the actual cable tray itself so that it, there's a clearance that that goes along with it? Um, not really. 
you would need to do some type of manipulation, whether you're using Dynamo or Forge application uh, to, to get that to work, or opening up the API and adding some, uh, some uh, custom programming uh, in, in here. Uh, the only thing that I can say is that you can, you can um, uh, bring in another family on top of it that has a, a designation as some uh, electrical object. So then it, get, it, it gets still flagged as electrical, but it, it sits on top with a, a dimensional parameter that you can change for the z-axis or the height or the width. Um, it, it could be just a matter of a simple extrusion, and it it, it could be, be transparent, uh, so it's not necessarily um, you know part of a floor plan view where you need it for a sheet. It's just to help you along in your design. So uh, a few different scenarios that that is definitely possible, um, but just not out of the box. It, it would just be something that you would just need to um, um, create as a as a generic uh, model, assign it, and then it'll it'll float on top of your cable train. Awesome, thank you. Um, another question coming from Michelle. Is there a reason why you would manually place fittings rather than using the trim extend command? Uh, on, the, on the vertical, the ones that we just did right now, the trim extend command will not work. Um, and, I'll, and I'll show you why. So, and, and I am a huge fan, by the way. So great observation. Uh, I am a huge fan of trim extent for, for uh, you know, especially for, for those that do uh, piping, it's, it's a great tool. So if I were to delete this object here and use the trim extend, okay, that's what ultimately will happen. Okay, so that's the reason why I didn't use it. Um, it, just, it, it just creates a lot of headaches. So that's the reason why when we're doing this type of uh, layout, um, we're, we're doing a more manual method because it, it is, uh, technically it is a workaround, right? We're, we're trying to get the environment to work for us. Uh, so this is ultimately uh, why we're not using uh, the trim in this particular scenario. Now, if it was this scenario here uh, on the top, then you are absolutely correct. If it was here and use the trim extend, and then, yep, we're, we're good to go. Uh, but on the on the vertical side, that's that's probably that that's the one reason why we didn't do it that way. Awesome. I hope that answered your question, Michelle. Let us know in the question box if you need more uh, more info. Uh, on the same uh, topic of the trim extend command, mm -hmm. uh, Alexander is asking if you use this the trim extend command to connect the branch to the main, would you get the same error as when you stretched into that vertical? Uh, the uh, the branch the main this one uh, this one here uh, there is no trim extend for getting a T um, uh, but if I did if I did delete this and um, you know if I draw a cable tray and bring it out you see that's not going to let me do it there um, but if I if I did do that here these two it's the same thing um, even if I were to bring this this piece out and connect into it like that this this will be fine right because this was still the the same piece. But in this case here, there is no trim extent, right? There, um, it um, either one of two things is going to happen here. One, there's not enough room, um, or it's going to flip it. And yep, it flipped it. You can actually see it right here. It flipped, and ultimately you get an error telling you that it's being drawn on the wrong side. Um, so same same scenario. Awesome, Alexander, I hope that answers. If not, let us know in the uh, questions box and I can even unmute you if you need to. Um, uh, Anna is asking, which level is normally used to draw the installation? Is it better to use the level of architecture or the new one from electrical installation? Mm, I'm not understanding level. If we're looking at levels, then we're looking at something uh, to this effect. Effect. we're looking at this level um, so maybe we can uh, put uh, um, activate the uh, the voice get more clarity yeah uh, Anna would you mind if I unmute you and you can ask your question directly to Carlos uh, um, yes hello uh, 
Yeah, my, my question is um, because so the, the architect uh, draws uh, the labels, the engineer draws the labels, and the electrical draws the labels also, or they, they use the, the, the architect labels in the in the the bro blog words, the project brochure. Mm -hmm. Yes, great. Okay, thank you for the clarity, and I appreciate that. Uh, the so th that that is a, that is a, a great question. It's it's probably the, the the question of of ages when it comes to levels. The the reality between coordinating between different models. So then, if some if you're if you're on a project and you're coordinating with a with a mechanical or your extended design team is um, is not all in house. They're 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 outside. So you have mechanical, you have electrical, you got architecture, you got structural. So you mm -hmm. have all of these different players. So mm -hmm. the, the one, one what I have seen in in uh, a full BIM uh, projects that have a BIM deliverable, there's also BIM execution plan. Um, so I would I would rely on that more than anything because it will tell me who has governance over levels, just like um, who would have governance over um coordinates which would be civil right so then i would say in certain scenarios the architect will have the majority of the control over levels mm -hmm. and if that's if that's the case and you and you have your electrical model the 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 proper way of making sure that you have that relationship is through a process called copy monitor mm -hmm. uh, so, so i will i will normally copy monitor levels from the architectural to make sure that if there's any changes, that I see those changes flagged in the coordination review. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, I, so have much. A, yeah I have another question about the cable. So normally the, in the project, the, the, electrical, uh, um, the, the electrical engineer draw also the, the cable or just the, 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 the cable trace? Because I, I have no experience in this in this question in the electrical field. Uh, the the electrical um, engineer will have the preliminary layouts on cable tray and conduit, um, if if it's a requirement of the project. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. and, and keep in mind for those that are on the call, um, there there there's a separate uh, topic between the intelligence of electrical data. When it comes to circuit circuiting, uh, what we're looking at here, when it comes to either conduit or cable tray, uh, this is just geometry, and it's just geometry for coordination. So mm -hmm. there are going to be some scenarios where there are projects where uh, there's there's an outside entity that is doing the the three dimensional coordination with cable tray, and then there's an engineering design team that is more concerned with the circuiting of data. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, you're welcome. And thank you so much, Anna, for your questions. Um, we are uh, at the top of the hour. <clears throat> there are a few other questions that weren't answered. Uh, we will uh, uh, answer these offline. Uh, thank you so much, Carlos, for this wonderful presentation. Uh, thank you, everyone, for attending. And uh, keep in mind that this is being recorded and all of you will receive an email tomorrow with a link to the recording. We'll post it on our customer success uh, learning hub. Uh, thank you so much and hope uh, to see you in uh, future versions of uh, our meetups. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good one.